everybody. I'm uh, Jean-Pierre Vincent here, the executive chef at Trump National Los Angeles. Uh, today we will be preparing a beautiful jumbo lump crab cake served with the sweet corn cassoulet. And also as well for a treat, we're going to also do our famous Trump style mojito. Very refreshing, very tasty, and I know everybody will love it. So let's go. So we're actually going to get started right now. I'm going to go through all the ingredients that you'll need to actually make the crab cake. So uh, we actually have a really nice, fresh jumbo lump crab meat. You can find it at any Whole Foods, Albertsons, any supermarket will have it. Uh, I prefer jumbo lump crab meat because it's the meatiest, it's the juiciest, and also it doesn't have those uh, scales that sometimes you'll find in crab meat. Our second ingredient is going to be our uh, bell peppers. Um, I'm a very colorful person, so I love, you know, different colors in my food. I like reds, the yellows, the greens, just to really make the crab cake vibrant, but also give it some really nice flavor. Also, another ingredient that we're going to use is our uh, panko breadcrumbs. Um, I prefer panko breadcrumbs just because they don't take away from the crab cake. Um, a lot of people like to add, you know, uh, different kinds of breading and you're tasting bread now, you're not tasting a crab cake. So panko is really nice, and that you can find at any grocery store. Uh, you were gonna need a nice fresh egg, uh, some herbs, chives, and also we're gonna need a little bit of mayonnaise. Now, I personally like to make my own mayonnaise when I do this, uh, but you can use any kind, any brand, light, doesn't matter, but you definitely need some nice mayonnaise, uh, also, we're going to need a nice fresh lemon, which we will zest to use the nice skin, and we'll also juice to make it nice and citrusy. Uh, and obviously, a little bit of uh, salt. I prefer to use the uh, nice pink Himalayan salt because it just adds really a great natural flavor to my food, and a little bit of white pepper. Those are ingredients for the crab cakes, and now I'm going to demonstrate how everything comes together. We are now going to go ahead and start making our crab cake. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start with our nice jumbo lump crab meat. Um, it's uh, one of these uh, dishes that um, inspired upon the crab cake was uh, because I was uh, living in Miami for a long time and we went to uh, one of the uh, restaurants in uh, West Palm Beach, uh, Joe Stone Crab, and I had some really nice crab cakes there and I just kind of sort of inspired me to really make an excellent crab cake because Joe Stone Crab is one of the most uh, famous uh, restaurants for seafood in uh, Florida. Um, anyway, so we're going to go ahead and add a little bit of egg in there for a nice binder. Uh, we've got our breadcrumbs panko. We're going to go ahead and mix everything together. Now, crab cakes is one of those things where it's not rocket science. It's just a crab cake. It just depends on how much love you add in there, and that's it. We're going to add a little bit of mayonnaise to bind it, mix everything together. Now crab cakes basically, uh, as far as texture goes, you want to be able to mold the crab cake. You want to be able to just uh, not be too stiff, but nice and soft. So at least it, it, it makes um, a cake essentially, which is what we're trying to make here. We're going to add a little bit of seasoning, salt, pepper. And like I always said in the past, I love using Himalayan salt just because it's really nice and uh, natural and, and light. But that's just my preference. Kosher salt is okay. Uh, iodized is fine too, which I don't use iodized salt because it's got iodine in it and that's not good for you. <laughs> so a little bit more panko. Um, and one of the final ingredients is uh, lemon. I'm going to add a little bit of lemon zest. Now this little uh, contraption in my hand is called a microplane. It's uh, basically a nice zester that uh, I think a carpenter made it up and he's probably somewhere in Tahiti hanging out having drinks while I'm sitting here making this beautiful crab cake. But this invention here I think uh, everybody should have uh, because it just makes the, the zesting citrus so easy. Uh, just a little bit of zest just to get a nice uh, aroma of citrus and crab cakes. I personally, I love citrus in my food. It just thinks it makes everything so much more vibrant. Okay, so now, once we have the consistency that we are looking for, I always like to taste everything that I make just to make sure that it's good. 
excellent. Really, really tasty. And I'm not just saying that. So now, to mold the crab cake, um, I personally like to use an ice cream scoop. You can use your hands. You can use uh, any kind of a ramekin, a mold. It doesn't matter. It's to your preference. For me, it's a little bit easier because that way I can get a nice, uh, even crab cakes in case I'm making 10 or 20 for, you know, whatever, whatever amount you're making. But that way your crab cake will be nice and even. So we got one there. We're going to make one more. Okay, so now I've got two perfect crab cakes. And now I'm going to go to my saute pan to start frying the crab cake up. So here I have a nice small little saute pan. Uh, this, is a, this particular one is a Teflon saute pan. Uh, but uh, you can use any regular saute pan. This is just a, happens to be a non-stick, so that way I know that my crab cake will not stick. We're going to use a little bit of oil. You can use uh, vegetable oil. You can use clarified butter if you have it. I personally don't like cooking with extra virgin olive oil because what happens is it doesn't have a nice, uh, it, it doesn't tolerate heat very well. So the oil will become bitter and it will ruin your food. So you want your pan to be fairly hot so you get a nice sear. You want to get them nice and pressed. And once you uh, have achieved the golden brown color, you want to go ahead and flip it and finish cooking it on the other side. And like I said, you see how fast that was? My crab cakes did not stick. They're beautiful, crisp, nice golden brown. Very tasty, they're gonna be very delicious in the inside. Crab cakes take about maybe two minutes to cook max at a high heat. Um, once you've flipped it on the one side, you wanna go ahead and drop your heat to a low. That way they cook nice and gently and they're nice and warm in the inside. Uh, some people like to go ahead and throw them in the oven and that's fine too, but I find that the throwing it in the oven, it actually dries them out a little bit so they're not as moist anymore. But as you can see, just with a little bit of heat, and uh, proper cooking techniques, I have achieved a perfect, beautiful, golden brown crab cake. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and make that sweet corn cassoulet. Um, I like uh, to use sweet corn because right now it's the summertime, it's in season. I'm a very seasonal chef. I love to use what's readily available, and I think that's also what enhances uh, people's food or even my food by itself. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead. We started with a little bit of uh, vegetable oil in the pan. Uh, vegetable oil again because it, uh, it's good with high heat and that's in case you don't have clarified butter or any other kinds of oils. We're gonna add a little bit of the pancetta and when we're doing this we're gonna want to make sure it's at a nice decent heat because we want to crisp up the pancetta. The pancetta itself is just add a little bit of uh, meatiness to the particular dish. And I think pancetta and uh, crab go really well together. We're gonna go ahead and add our peppers now. You can use any sweet bell peppers. Uh, if you like a little bit of heat, you can add a little bit of jalapenos. If you like garlic, you can definitely add garlic. This is just uh, my personal preference on how I like my crab cake cassoulet. Go ahead and add some of the corn. Nice and sauteing. You always want to hear a little sizzle when you're cooking because that way you know that uh, you're cooking from the heart. It's really nice. A uh, good old friend of mine, when I was working in a Japanese restaurant, he said, uh, good fire, good food. No good fire, no good food. <laughs> okay, now we're going to go ahead and add the glaze, a little bit of white wine. We're going to add a little bit of seasoning, a little bit of salt, and a little bit of pepper. I believe that you guys should use wine that you drink because that's typically the best uh, flavor for food. 
If you use box wines, those typically have salt additives and they can ruin the, the dish that you happen to be making. So always cook with wine that you like to drink. Now our sweet corn cassoulet is ready to go. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna plate this. I wish you guys were here because this sweet corn smells so delicious that I think I need to have a little taste just to make sure it's really good. Mm. Oh my God, this is so good. All right, so now we're gonna dish it up. We have a nice, beautiful glass dishware here. Now I think this dish is uh, really nice and light. I uh, didn't add any butter or any additives like that. I like to use uh, just really healthy ingredients because that's just the way I love to cook. It's a, one of those dishes you can serve as an appetizer, you can do as an entree, you can serve with a little bit of salad. It's just an all around kind of dish. And there you have it. Nice crab cakes with sweet corn and pancetta cassoulet. Now that I have finished making this awesome crab cake, you know what, I'm really thirsty. I'm gonna make myself a nice Trump mojito. I'm gonna show you how it's done. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and make that nice mojito. Uh, first thing off, you're gonna need some nice, fresh, beautiful mint. Uh, I happen to pick this from the garden outside, so it's really, it's vibrant, smells really good, nice and refreshing is what you're looking for. Uh, I've got some nice limes. Uh, you're gonna need a little bit of sugar, a nice good rum. You can use uh, any kind of Bacardi. You can use any kind of rum you like. You also have a nice carbonated water. And uh, sugar, I said, you're gonna need some ice, and that's it. So now we're gonna go ahead and demonstrate how to make this wonderful, refreshing mojito. Okay, so now, in order to make this mojito, you're gonna need a couple of things. You're gonna need a nice uh, muddler. Uh, this is so you can go ahead and grate the sugar with the lim and the mint. You're also gonna need a nice jigger, so that way you can measure your uh, rum perfectly. And you're also going to need a nice glass in order to uh, use to shake the mojito. So let's get started. First we're going to go ahead and add our lime, about two tablespoons. We're going to add three teaspoons of sugar. Now also when you're adding these ingredients, it's everybody's preference. You can add a little more sugar if you like it sweet. If you like a little more tart, you can go ahead and add extra lime. I personally am a nice sweet person, so I love it sweet. Now we're gonna go ahead and add uh, some fresh mint. I like to sort of rip the mint while I'm throwing it in there because that way it just, it just, just gets the environment smelling good and makes people wanna drink more, so. Okay, so now I take it and then just kinda crush it gently, lightly. You don't have to pound it. Uh, just what you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and grate uh, all the ingredients together so they actually extract the oils, which is what actually helps to make this drink so refreshing and tasty. Um, I remember one time I was uh, living in South Beach in Miami where I had spent about 10 years of my life. And I was uh, in one of the hotels and an actual Cuban guy came up and uh, he made me this drink. And I said, wow, this is the most tastiest drink I've ever had. What is it? He said, it's a nice mojito. I said, oh really, okay, well then can you teach me how to make this mojito? And ever since then, I love mojitos. Okay, so now we're gonna add our rum. I'm gonna use the jigger. Now I personally like rum, so I'm gonna go ahead and add three ounces of it. But if you really like rum, there you go. We're gonna go ahead also now add our ice. About one nice scoop of ice just to get it nice and chilled and cold. If you don't like to add too much ice to it because you think it might water down your drink, you can go ahead and chill your glass and you don't have to add as much ice. Okay, so nice and locked down. Now we're gonna shake it a little bit just so we get all those flavors nice and blended, nice and cold and chill. Oh my God, I can already hear it. It tastes so good. Okay, so now it's nice. Give it a little tap. Pour it in. You always want to pour it three quarters of the way in. And now you want to go ahead and finish it off 
with a little bit of soda water or champagne. And you garnish it with, uh, here at the club, on our South Beach night, we like to use our nice sugar cane sticks and also our little uh, umbrellas because you can't have a cocktail without an umbrella. And there you have it. Cheers. Thank you so much for uh, spending the day with me here at Trump National Los Angeles. I am, again, Jean-Pierre Vincent, and I hope to see you soon. Thank you.